Welcome, and thank you for joining us for the East Baton Rouge Parish Library's Mid-City Microcon. Although this is our third year doing the Mid-City Microcon, this is our very first 100% virtual con. The Mid-City Microcon is a celebration of diversity in comic book characters, creators, and their fans. This event provides a free, inclusive opportunity for new and lifelong fans to find themselves in the world of comics and art, both on the page and behind the scenes. We strive to amplify the voices of creators who challenge the status quo, especially those who have been historically underrepresented in the comic book industry, and also local creators from Baton Rouge and Louisiana. Unlike many comic book conventions, the Mid-City Microcon does not charge a fee to vendors nor attendees, thereby allowing more freelance, independent, and self-published creators a space to showcase their work. For more information about this year's Microcon, as well as previous years, please visit our website at ebrpl.com slash mcmc. Thank you. Thank you for coming to the Cosplay Competition Awards part of the Mid-City Microcon. Uh, thank you for joining us today. This live session is being recorded and will be made available after the convention. Uh, we will also have captions at that time. Before we get started with the session, we'd like to let you know that we'll try to make this a family-friendly family friendly session, but conversations are fluid and may evolve into topics more acceptable for older teens and adults. We ask you to exercise your judgment on your child's maturity level, as well as your own comfort level with the content. We encourage you to watch the live streamed panels along with your child if there are any hesitations. Also, please be sure to be respectful in the chat. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn over this session to the judges, Ninja Yo-Yo, Lady Luna Loveless, and Gamma Ray Cosplay. All right, hello guys. Um, and once again, thank you for participating um, in this virtual con. Um, we really appreciate every view, every like, um, all of that. Um, it goes uh, without saying that it has been a crazy year. Um, so even in regards to events and cosplay conventions, it's just been unique for all of us. So um, without further ado, that's what we're doing today is um, the uh, announcements of the cosplay competition. And I am joined by um, two judges, uh, one of which I'm sure is on her way. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and let Gamma introduce herself. Hello everyone, my name is Gamma Ray Cosplay. I am a lawyer by day, cosplayer by night, geek always. Um, yes, I've been cosplaying for about three years. It has been an amazing, awesome, fun journey. I love it. Um, I've met in, uh, just incredible people. Hence, I was able to, to meet my fellow cosplayer, Ninja Yo-Yo, in this process and throughout this journey. Um, as you can see, we are great minds think alike. We're doing another one of our dope duo cosplays because, uh, as you can tell, I am cosplaying as Marie uh, from BNA. The mink, not a weasel, get it right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we are here to just celebrate fellow amazing cosplayers and um, their awesome, awesome costumes. I mean, I'm so excited. This was so hard. They were so good. <laughs> oh my God, they were so good. They were indeed super. I mean, when I say every single cosplay that um, came across our table or virtual stage, if you will, made us smile and I mean like double row teeth like grin ear to ear smile I want to thank each and every one of you guys for um having the courage to submit something um to something that's just not what you're used to you're used to doing certain things with to cosplay competitions and this might even be your very first cosplay competition so um hats off to you guys um all like 20 something of you guys um I really do we all appreciate it um, as Gamma said, I'm Ninja, <laughs> Ninja Yo-Yo. Um, today I'm cosplaying as uh, Michiru uh, from BNA, so me and Gamma are set. Um, I'm stalling just a little bit for Charlotte here, um, Lady Luna, um, who is also fantastic. And drum roll, I think. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, I think I saw her pop up. She's coming. On, on her way, on her way. I can see you guys. There it is. There we go. 
almost there. And I mean, just bear with us. This is all new to us. And poor Charlotte, Charlotte, I'm, I'm from Mississippi originally, bear with my accent, <laughs> um, was, you know, right in the middle of things in Lafayette. So, I mean, displaced, had to get the power going, you know, so, um, but still suck it through because she's a soldier. And um, I think she's going to be working for some Capsule Corp here. So, um, Definitely I'm glad she's safe. She's as dedicated to safe and dry. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And she's for making sure. work. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, look, I'm just happy that I'm able to see fellow cosplayers and just friends that I was looking forward to seeing at many conventions. And, you know, I, we just having to kind of adjust to this new norm we're living in. And I'm so glad that we are able to keep this level of creativity and content going by, you know, just switching gears to a virtual platform. You know, hey, I'm loving it. I, I honestly, I feel like it's definitely creating more opportunities for people, especially with cosplay that probably wouldn't have had the opportunity to, you know, experience or do things just, just due to life, but virtual kind of makes it easier. I think I see her. I will there's Bulma. <gasps> Am I here? I think you're here. Can y'all hear me? We hear you. Can anybody hear me? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead and introduce yourself. If possible. Hey, Stop talking already? I think uh, I think we're ready. Um, just in case y'all didn't hear, um, Charlotte is uh, like I said, um, based in uh, Lafayette, Louisiana, and um, cosplays under the name Lady Luna Loveless, and is super awesome. And um, also does a lot of crafts, um, crafts and stuff like that through Cajun Moon Creations. So um, just in case y'all didn't get it, because I didn't get on my end, I want to make sure she gets all the props because she is super awesome. And um, without further ado, let's kind of go on and get into it because we only got a certain amount of time. So let's get it, folks. First up, and we're going to highlight everybody um, yeah. just because everybody deserves to be highlighted. So first off, we have, okay, I've cosplayed Starfire before. Never has my hair been this late. <laughs> yes, honey, yes. <laughs> this wig, oh my God, just the personality. Her hair, the light eyes, makeup, like she slayed. Her body mm -hmm. looks amazing in the costume. I love it. And that's my girl, Queen. I, man, I miss her too. She had to move away. She looks amazing. That's always awesome when you can pair fitness with cosplay and make it work out good. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, the inspo for um, the initial inspo for Starfire was to. Um, you know, get fit, and I've done it too. I call it CosFit. To get CosFit, yeah. you put on that, yeah, you put on that Zentai suit or that Lycra or whatever vinyl spandex, and you just feel yourself. And I mean, the confidence just shows through the pictures. The makeup and the hair is wonderful. So, um, great job, Starfire. Next up, we have uh, Taylor Bridges um, with a gender bent sun eater. Um, I love to gender bend. I think it's really cool. I think it's a unique way to take on a character that you like. Um, so, of course, this is speaking to my heart. Um, Sun Eater is from My Hero Academia, one of the big three. Um, super cool character. And um, I'm going to let the other two kind of talk a little bit. Oh. I don't talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, she definitely, um, Taylor, uh, a fellow cosplayer, I know her as well. She like embodied this character. I mean, just off the rip looking from the hair, she's got even the ears, just the personality. I mean, striking that pose. I like she, I love it. I'm a huge fan, as you can tell, as well as Ninja. Uh, Somebody. I love gender bending too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, well, 
Well, <laughs> uh, from our um, judging meeting, I know that um, Charlotte also loved the cosplay. <laughs> um, I mean, we loved all of them, but but seriously, um, the, the gauntlets are, are made, handcrafted. Um, the weathering and the painting on the chest piece and the belt is just, you know, really great. That's the striking purple. And the wig styling, I mean, come on, yeah. like, that's just, I mean, it's really good head to toe. It's not as easy as you think to turn around a gender, to flip gender on its head with your cosplay and to still make it true to the character. And um, I find that being a huge fan of My Hero, um, I feel that um, Taylor here did that. So good job, Taylor. And let's move on. Okay, we got Mickey here. Mickey is uh, a homie of mine. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. This is uh, Cara, Cara, Lord help me. I watched the Mandalorian, Mandalor yeah, the Mandalorian, <laughs> found it out. <laughs> I can't remember if it's Cara or Cara, so bear with me. Um, but um, this is one of like a really, really cool, tough character to do. And might I say that um, Mickey did a fantastic job. Um, you may not be able to tell to the naked eye, so to speak, but um, even now to the texture and um, the Under Armour here, the leggings are handmade. These aren't like Amazon leggings. These are actual leggings that Mickey made, um, including the panels. Um, so everything has its own texture. Everything that was, was matched from the constructed armor to the leggings to match. Um, really, really, really good job here, Mickey. Um, I've seen you kind of grow. Um, Mickey, would, you would look at this and think Mickey's been cosplaying the whole time of existence. But I um, mean, just like the trajectory is just getting better and better with uh, each project you pull out, Mickey. Good job. I love anything with, with foam or armor. I mean, I, like when you told me she was kind of new to the game, I, I didn't believe it. I definitely thought she had been in it for a while. I think she did an amazing job. Like you said, the leggings, with the, the foam armor, all that. I mean, yes. And she's serving his face. Yeah, the makeup, it might look like it's subtle or whatever, but Mickey does not play around with a makeup brush and every single from the matte lip <laughs> to the eyeliner was thought out to try to get that same look as the character on The Mandalorian. Oh, oh no, she went away. Nope, oh, she's oh, lost. She <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm just gonna pop in and out from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you. We're on Mickey. Do you have anything to say about Mickey before we move on? I think she, I love Oh man, she's saying all this good stuff. Can <laughs> We are going to move on, keep it moving here. All right, next up we got Krista here with another gender bin, so you know I'm happy. <laughs> um John Constantine. Oh, the confetti. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> um yeah, these um I really want to highlight this uh on the right side here, that pose, that angle. Whoever was the photographer here, that angle here. I really love the uh the fort shortening here. And I mean the the swagger that is Constantine is showing. <laughs> It is appreciated. It wasn't just like, let me stand here with my hand on the hip. Like right. it was literally like kind of thought out, even like the door and the atmosphere. Um, even the cigarettes. I was about to say, even the pack of cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
I love this one. I, I'm I'm a the John Constantine fan. I've I've done this character as well, and it's it's a lot of fun. You just it's all in the swagger, like that. yes, the drip. <laughs> I don't know if did we lose there. I'm. Can you guys hear me now? We can hear you now. For now, Good. I also really love Constantine. I think they did an excellent job. Definitely the posing, the attitude shows through. It was one of my favorite photos. Yeah, excellent job. All right, yeah, let's keep sure. it moving. Oh. <laughs> this one. Um, so we got Becky here with Sarah Jane Smith. Um, I have not seen a lick of Dr. Who, so I definitely had to go research the character myself. And you guys, I found one photo of this outfit. One. Um, and Becky here was able to recreate the whole look. Head to toe, everything is made, um, sewn, crafted, um, except for the potted plate in the shoes. I mean, so we got like these overalls here, the owl, I mean, the attention to detail off of very little, because apparently it's old school Doctor Who, correct me if I'm wrong. So, I mean, you know, you don't have as much to go off of, and Becky did a great job here. I can't remember maybe what number Doctor, when I was looking up the reference, but um, it's definitely one of the first uh, um, pre-Matt um, Smith and, and, and uh David Tennant. <laughs> <laughs> I've never watched any Doctor Who either, but I also had to do some some quick research, and I was surprised. To be able to cosplay something that they love that much, and then have a TARDIS in the picture too, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Let you kind of know what you're getting into. I was like, yeah. I think this is Doctor Who. So let me make sure so I'm not looking ignorant. Um, <laughs> all right, let's keep it moving. All right, we got Chloe here with Stella um, from, is that the Winks, if I remember correctly? Um, Winks Club. Oh, oh. No, I think I hate that one. <laughs> um, this is really good, guys. I mean, I've made wings before. I would not never even. be able to have the courage to not only do the wings, but to do fabric appliques on top of the wings and then appendages on top of the wings. I mean, it's really extraordinary to, to look at. And the more I look at it, the more I love it. Um, even the outfit, guys, was all dyed. It was thrifted, dyed, cut, sewn, and adjusted. Nothing, the shoes, the tights, nothing of it was just like store ball and just thrown on. Even though it looks like casual wear, it just, I mean, she, there's like so much attention to detail here that uh, I'm just kind of in love with it. Yeah, I agree. It just goes back to that using what you have thing. You know, thrifting is one of my favorite ways to cosplay. The dress I'm wearing, I thrifted and painted some stuff to look like Bulma. And so it's just like, it's a really fun aspect of cosplay. I love to see cosplayers that do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Great job. Looks like we're moving on here to Sky with Flareon the Barbarian. The Barbarian. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to make it rhyme so bad. Um, Flareon mm -hmm. being an evolution here. Um, the mashup. I know it's a mashup, but I do not have enough system to know if it's D&D &D or... I think it's the D and evolution. There we go. Oh, that's a pun. I love a pun. Great. Yeah. <laughs> that being said, and that was just a guess, of course. I mean, I'm I'm into it, <laughs> but I'm also into this one way or the other. Yeah. The um. I love props. I'm I'm a prop girl when it comes mm -hmm. to cosplaying. That's kind of been my strong suit and forte. So, with the axe and and the details of that. That, that chest plate armor, like, I mean, in the ears, I mean, it's just, 
Just flames, like flames emoji. Like it's just, it's so dope. <laughs> I mean, every single piece guys is crafted. I mean, the, the shirt, the shorts, I mean, everything was handmade. Um, it's really extravagant. The wig styling is all solid. Um, of course, that battle axe, though, is kind of a superstar here. Um, mm -hmm. Really love the confidence here and the posing and stuff, too. Um, Sky, you did a wonderful job. Even the chain mill. Um, we have progress pictures. Like, that's all made, too. That's not just, like, a piece that you get. Right. Moving on. Star! Sorry, I got excited. <laughs> Um, Star is doing here, please, once again, do not butcher me for my pronunciation. Um, Muriel, Lord help it. Um, this is another gender bend, um, but this gender bend is more so nuanced because we're presenting the male character here, um, which is, I mean, kudos to you, Star. I wish I could pull it off, but I wouldn't even know where to start. And you look so great. We can see here in the left picture, I think from the right, um, it seems like there was like a evolution or some upgrades made here um, with the wig styling and the scarf and um, the, the, the undersuit here. Um, and just, you can tell like how much progress is made even from maybe one to two times wearing it. So I think it's a really great job done here. Um, from the character reference photos, it's pretty much right on, right, right on the money too. So I really like this start. I mean, the under change to make it look more like the character. Added underneath and it really made it stand out more. I agree. I definitely, yeah, definitely. Actually had that the, with the flesh undertone. Because um, that's right. Like, that's kind of sometimes difficult when you're, you know, the, the male character you're doing, he's mainly might be, you know, shirtless or some skin exposure. But I mean, I just think she embodied it. Yeah, great yeah. job. Excellent, excellent job. Next up, we have to the stage, Kate with Alice Liddell, Liddell. It's from a video game, I know that much. <laughs> that video game, and it was so creepy. And when I saw that, like, spot on, that's, I knew exactly what she I, was doing. Yeah, I know the character, you know. Um, but um, Kate here, I want, I want y'all to understand that this looks like homie went to AliExpress and bought this. No, homie made this, that apron, the dress, all of it is made. This is not, I mean, adjust your monitors, check it. Because <laughs> this, I mean, all the hymns, everywhere you look is a hymn. So Kate, I mean... Kate is somebody that I think always kills it every single time, even when it looks like it's just off the rack. I mean, just the attention to detail here is just like super awesome. And um, I can't gush enough over it. Great job, Kate. Uh, yeah, I played the video game quite a bit. And both of them, there's more than one. And I really loved, like, Alice has a lot of outfits she wears. There's nothing like the classic dress that she wears, and she really nailed this one with, like, the embroidery she did of the symbols on the dress and the apron. I mean, it was just, it was perfection, really was. I loved it. Brought my favorite, one of my favorite video games right out of the screen for me. As somebody who's just, like, really trying to get more and more into sewing um, some of my cosplays, look, hats off. Like hands, just all the praise <laughs> to all the cosplayers who legit so and and are just seems just when it comes to to their cosplay because that <laughs> it is not easy, y'all. It's doable, but it is an art in itself. <laughs> and I do want to interject here. Um, 
if we can, I mean, just as it pops along, cosplayers, I see that y'all are in the chat, so feel free to drop your handle. Um, nothing wrong with a little promo. That's what we're okay. here for. Because um, I want to call Kate to this place so bad, but I'm reading the slide. <laughs> um, so you guys, yeah, let's get all the support out for y'all. So feel free to interact in that chat and um, drop your handle and all that so uh, everybody can show y'all some love. Moving on. Oh, my heart, my soul. Okay, we got JB here. <laughs> this is this is an Animal Crossing cosplay, guys, and I've never played Animal Crossing until New Horizons. So I am a new fan, and Flick is the homie for sure. And when I first saw JB's uh, kind of humanoid take on Flick, I could have thrown my phone across the room. I mean... <laughs> It's one thing to do stuff exactly like the character, which is great, but it's nothing to have to interpret for yourself what you think this character would be like if something was a little off. So he's like a little like lizard dude or whatever in Animal Crossing, a little chibi lizard dude, but obviously we got a human standing in front of us. So um, they really like, you know, they did the tail, they did the spikes on the wig here, um, did the makeup to do some scaling. I mean, that makeup, though, like, I mean, it's really good. And we got some prosthetics as well. So um, JB is a phenomenal uh, special effects artist, and, I mean, it shows. Oh, thank you, Oscar. Um, Gamma, were you saying something? No, I was saying like um, when I saw this image and in in the in the character reference, I was just like, I'm just like, adorbs. Like, I mean, I know the character is like supposed to be like this like tough little you know animal, but I was just like, I just, <laughs> I mean, she's definitely like I said, the prosthetics, with the hair, the tail, all that. I mean, yes. Yeah, they really knew what they were doing this. I mean, like, the curve, even down to the curve and the little tail, like, JB really, like, did a really good job here. Moving on. I keep saying my heart with each slide. <laughs> <laughs> but really, my heart. It's just that, it was that hard. I mean, it's so slow. My, my chest. <laughs> Next up, we have Rachel with another gender bin here for Hellboy. Lily boy in the name. Um, don't, once, you, once again, adjust your monitors. That is all made with cardboard, you guys. Like, what? <laughs> like, I'm not, I kid you not. Um, I saw some progress pics and stuff like this on social media. And, um... Rachel really bodied this uh, this build on this arm and the horns. And, I mean, face paint. Really I mean, good. The face paint. I think um, I remember Rachel saying it was her first time experimenting with the body paint. Hey, you got full coverage, so there you go. Good saying. job. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's another thing that's not easy to do. If you, you might have the right uh, makeup. And, and all that kind of stuff, but just the application process. I mean, it's, sometimes it's hit or miss until you just kind of get it right. But she, for her to just be her first time, could not tell. Um, let's move on. Next up, we have the Homestar Runner um, by Ryan, but bear with me once again, um, Kindler. Um, this is so, this is so just precious. <laughs> this is so precious, guys. Um, we saw, I mean, once again, it's another head-to-toe, fully constructed look. Um, we saw a bunch of progress photos, and I mean, it took a lot to build something that's not a human 
physique, so to speak, to make sure that you can even function in it. Uh, so major kudos um, for this look. Oh yeah, like honestly, I, this is one of those that I just can do nothing but smile. Like it definitely put a huge grin of just like, I just love it. I mean, it definitely pulled me back in just to being in a con and walking around and just seeing all the different types of fandoms and, and cosplayers and the costumes because, um, yeah, this is, I mean, just talent. <laughs> mm -hmm. Brings a huge... Yeah, it's um, good for don't spend no day if you still think it's really awesome. And that's what a con is all about, walking around saying, I don't know what they are, but they look great. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I, I love it. Moving on. Next up to the stage, we have Elsa. But for Christmas, Ibarra, Sheer, oh Lord. I read, I read the manga, y'all. <laughs> and I can't pronounce. I, I swear I know. <laughs> Shiozaki. <laughs> we know. What to say. We know. <laughs> Aunt Lady, come on, man. <laughs> um, these are beautiful pictures. They're so precious. I know. I mean, these are so sweet. I don't know how else to describe it. I mean, um, the characters here, y'all, literally are supposed to be like this foliage lead vine situation. Um, so there's some detail here. It's a Christmas look. So Elsa kind of had to think outside the box on what can I do to bring this character into Christmas. And I mean, it's kind of a springtime like here. So um, bringing this Christmas theme, I think it's just so precious. And it's so, it's so cute. And um, I'm assuming those are zip tie halo situations um, always look immaculate. Um, so great job, yeah. Elsa. I love the festivity of it. That was so cool. Yeah, it's cute. Next up, we have Christina with Sango from Inuasha. Um, very much on topic here with the sequel to Inuasha coming out. So my heart is full. <laughs> um, I like that the photo was taken um, kind of in the woodsy area because that's kind of where the like 95% of where Inuasha takes place. So I feel like that was a conscious attention to detail here. The ponytail is full and thick, so the wig is great. Um, Christina is showing a lot of confidence here in the pictures and looks super adorable, so it's really cute. Yeah, I love it. I definitely love the, even, you know, with the mask and the attention to the overall costume. I mean, she's got the weapons. And like you said, the majority of the plot and story when it came to Inuyasha, you a lot of trees in the woods. <laughs> so, I mean, perfect. Mm -hmm. And yes, with the ponytail. I mean, just everybody's hair is, yes. Not a shake and go inside. And if she really wanted to wear that, she could wear it somewhere right now because she's got a mask, so it would work. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Corona ready. <laughs> Good job, Christina. Moving on. Yeah. Next up, we have Nicole as uh, the Dark Phoenix and not the movie version, which is great. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, Nicole yeah. seems to be having the best time ever, which I love to see in cosplay photos. Like, there, there's just a fun, there's just a whimsical funness, that's not a word, but whatever, <laughs> that um, is here that I just think is so cute and great. And um, the fit of everything is great. And um, it's just such a joy. <laughs> it's such a joy. Like, um, it's coming it was, off of the yeah. page, her, like, just overall, I mean, like you said, joy, like, having having fun, you can definitely feel that energy um, through her pictures, like, and that's the whole point, like, when you are in a cosplay, if you not, if you aren't feeling it, and you can't, you don't like it, it's going to show, and how is everybody else supposed to 
enjoy it as well if, if you look uncomfortable and miserable. So, I mean, that's one of the fun things I love about seeing cosplayers when they love their cosplays and they're just like, look at me. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, yes, you look amazing. And, and might I stress that no matter, even if it looks just like a Zentai suit or a Spanish suit or whatever, I guarantee you we cosplayers are uncomfortable. <laughs> so to look that happy yeah. <laughs> means that Nicole really enjoyed, what, really enjoyed the cosplay. So um, I love it. Good job. Yeah, the editing to the... Yeah, that edited picture was, that was dope too. That, that sealed it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so fun. So happy. So happy potentially destroying the world. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, we have Audra Thompson as Noir. Um, Christmas, another Christmas theme outfit. Um, this outfit, I want to once again stress is made from head to toe, fully constructed, fully conceptualized. This isn't just like a pattern you just go and just get and make this, um, characters from a Persona 5. And this is not just like the main skin or anything either. So to be able to take one reference photo or so and to make a fully, I mean, scene for scene, holly leaf for holly leaf look um, was really outstanding here. Oh, again, yeah. Hats off to <laughs> so good. the detail in this. I mean, <clears throat> speechless, pretty much. I mean, utter all. The hat is made out of a Pringles can, y'all. <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, just the, the 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 resourcefulness in addition to it just looking like a. It's just a well-crafted garment. Like, you can't really clock anything because it, I mean, one photo and, I mean, full 360 just yep. matches everything and everything's so pristine um, and aligned. It's just a really fantastic job by Audra here, um, which I believe is a, a bite of cake with a Y um, on social media um, in case they haven't dropped the handle here. <laughs> oh, those faces. We have a teen here, Lamp, with Toko Fukara. Fukara. From beat down in the south. <laughs> I'm one of those people. I'm so sorry. Uh, I will film an apology after this. Um. <laughs> These are so cute. I mean, I would never, like, like, to have such personality as a teenager in these photos, it's just so precious. I mean, I wasn't doing makeup like that when I was a teenager. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, bless it. I just fell at the hot topic and call it a day. Um, it's really good here. And, I mean, if this is what at such a young age Lamp's doing, I mean, the sky's going to be a limit. Like, watch out. I can't wait to see how she progresses. I hope she continues with cosplaying because the character she's doing, spot on. Like in not only the look, but just the mannerism. And it's so cool to be, for her to be at that age already kind of doing stuff like this because I wasn't, I mean, I'm in my thirties and I just started. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just started this journey. So I love seeing, you know, young kids and teenagers diving in. Think we're ready for the next one. Oh! <laughs> Stop the presses. Like, this. Oh, is so this hot? <laughs> we have uh, Cody here as the Joker, the Heath Ledger version, which is uh, arguably the best version. Yes. And um, little Cody here said that uh, they wanted to be the Joker because they want to make people laugh and they want to scare people. And I mean, everybody else go home. This is it. This is the one. <laughs> Get the whole contest down. Like, oh my goodness. Can we say absolute adorbs 
oh my gosh, just all the heart emojis in her eyes. So, so adorable. The face, I mean, Cody's ready. Got the face, got the hands ready, got the cow. <laughs> I mean, it's so, so perfect. I'm ready to have kids just to, so I can do stuff like this with them. Like, <laughs> I'm ready to have kids so we, we can start doing cosplays <laughs> and I can dress them up. <laughs> So I believe after this, you guys, um, we're going to go straight up into the winners. Um, before we get to announce it in the drum rolls and the confetti and all that, um, for the 15th time um, this uh, session, um, we three cannot stress how hard it was to pick um, the, the, the winner in the best in show. I mean, it was, you know, we didn't choke each other out, but I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, we worked well together. <laughs> it just, everybody did so good. It was so amazing. I was both jealous and proud and happy at the same time. Everybody that popped up on the screen. Um, we all had nothing but good to say about all y'all because it was, you could tell that y'all were so passionate about your characters and having fun. And that's what cosplay is about. And anything else from the judges before we get into the drum rolls? No, you, you hit um, the points. I mean, it was I'm excited to let them know. Yes, y'all did amazing. This was so hard. I'm so proud of everybody. So proud. Yes, congrats to all of you just for being brave enough to enter the contest and put yourself out there and give us the chance to be jealous over your amazing stuff because y'all are all wonderful. And I will be hitting some of y'all up for commission because I didn't know some of y'all had it like that. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, best believe uh, we'll be in your inboxes. So, without further ado, with the drum roll and your dramatics and a commercial break and all that, um, let's get to it. The winner for the kids, of course, is Lil Cody as the yeah. Joker. <laughs> Looking yeah. so menacing. I mean, I mean, I'm laughing and I'm scared. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Ooh. at the same time. <laughs> I mean, uh, Chris, Christian Bell is shaking in his uh, bat boots. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is so cute. And um, thanks to Cody and uh, whoever submitted to little Cody, thank you for this wonderful joy. Um, that is both cute and terrifying at the same time. And our teen winner, Limp. I mean, I don't know if Limp would have had any competition, but the poses, the makeup, I mean, it's just so much personality, and it's so adorable. And I feel like, Limp, you have a bright future ahead of you. Yes, keep going. Keep going. I can't wait to see you continue. And next is our adult winner. Sky, Larion the Barbarian. Yay. I, I mean, when everything head to toe is constructed and you got a prop and you worked the foam and you sewed and you did armor and you did ears and you did, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, it's really, really, really good. And um, it's just um, perfection. Yeah, I mean, I think you hit it all. It was here amazing. Breath. Next, oh, here we go. All right, next we have the Judges Award. Um, if you guys are not familiar with um, the Judges Award, um, it's just somebody that really, really, really needed to be shouted out for their creativity um, and X, Y, Z, everything. Um, Taylor... Once again, constructed head to toe. There was some painting involved here. There was some foam work, um, wig styling, and not just like putting a curl and iron in some like really tough stuff here. So we just wanted to kind of um, celebrate Taylor here with the Judges Award. Yes, 
Big, big congrats. Loved this cosplay. Loved it. I mean, slayed it from head to toe. Had, had to have one gender been in there, right? Right. And best in show goes to yeah. Audra yeah. Thompson mm. for this Christmas version, Persona 5. Hands down, head to toe, everywhere's a him look from like one reference movie. Look, bow down, all all the praise, hats off, literally. I mean, just head to toe, you said, so that it utter perfection. I mean, I can't see where there's anything or any, that was out of place or a him, a stitch. Like, I mean, come on. This is, <laughs> like, off of one picture? Come on. Yeah. She did that. I love how she really used so many different types of fabric, too. Like, she could have been so lazy mm -hmm. and just went all red, the same fabric. But you can tell that she didn't. There's different textures and colors. It's just, it's gorgeous. You can't see it here, of course, but, you know, when we zoomed in on the photos, uh, the, the, the diamonds in the spade and the heart and club, I mean, it's not just like a felt thing or whatever stuck on. It's like embroidered and then it's got like seam work around, embellished around each one. And then the exits are seam work across each one. Like, I mean, everything is just so art, like the attention to detail for each and everything. Nothing was just kind of thrown away. Um, that was so finished and polished. Yeah, and polished. Um, and even like the Holly branches, you could have just gone. She could have just gone to Joanna Michaels or, or whatever, and just like threw one on there. I wouldn't know the difference, but she made sure there was two, just like the photo. <laughs> like it was all placed perfectly, just like uh, just like the character. So, um, really great job here, and um, yeah. Y'all, look, it was, this was not easy. I was hot, like, no. by no means was that easy. They were all amazing. We ended up taking them like 30, 45 minutes just to pick who was going to win. It took much longer. In addition to us, like, meeting and crying to ourselves individually, like, by ourselves, like, going through each in person and, like, looking at each and every detail, I mean, it was a lot, especially we got more time because it's virtual, right? So it's not like you walk across the stage and you talk to us. Like, we're sitting here thinking, well, what about, what, let me go back, let me go back. Mm -hmm. So it, it was way more nerve-wracking. <laughs> <That's Yeah. cool. laughs> it was way more nerve-wracking. But um, let's just give a uh, quick drop of each of our own personal social media so we can get on up out here. Um, go ahead, Gamma. Tell them where they can find you. Well, you can find me at Gamma Ray Cosplay on all social media platforms. Definitely go hit me up, check me out. Uh, love doing my cosplays. Got some more content coming up. And also, I do co-host a podcast called Geeked Up. You can definitely check us out um, on all social media platforms at Geeked Up JXN. Uh, definitely make sure you uh, listen to the podcast, our episodes. We got uh, quite a few stacked up, so they're on all kind of listening and streaming podcast services. So, yeah. I had a blast, man. I'm kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> we were here. Lady Luna, if you can hear us paging to Mars, tell us, <laughs> tell us where we can find you on social media. So I'm on Facebook at Cajun Moon Creations, or you can find me on Instagram or Twitter at Lady Luna Loveless. Um, you know, I do a lot of cosplaying. I do cosplaying with my kids. They love to join in with me. Uh, I do wig work and wig commissions and things like that. So follow me. If y'all ever need any, any kind of help or anything, shoot me a question. I'm always here to answer. And I had so much fun. <laughs> and finally, it's me, your girl, Ninja Yo-Yo. And I'm available at the Ninja Yo-Yo on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and Tumblr, if you are still doing that 
thing. Um, <laughs> I am available for um, any podcast, interviews, uh, MC work, um, and of course I cosplay as often as I can um, when able. So, um, thank you on behalf of all three of us to Miss City MicroCon for having us and hosting a virtual cosplay contest so everybody can get their craft out there. Um, thank you to every single participant. If I know you personally, you stunned me. If I don't know you personally, you now have new fans in each and every one of us. And um, I cannot say enough of how awesome of an experience this has been. So without further ado, we're gonna um, dip and take off all this makeup. Yeah. <laughs>